take good shots, but be simple. They've been incredibly effective at times in games. Let's hope that they get it right today. Let's hope that the youngster, Asmian Mulare, has a good game and you know, it's going to help his career if he has a good game in this one. Absolutely will help his career and future prospects if he can go up against France and put up some big numbers. Good afternoon and welcome to Jakarta. It is the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Cote d'Ivoire taking off France in the classification rounds here. It is the last game day for both these teams. France winning the jump ball. They go into 48, 48 to Gobert. And Ba, I think, is going to pick up a foul. Unfortunate loose ball foul there going against Cote d'Ivoire early. Yeah, this is one of the things that disappoints you at times about France in this tournament. If that pass was better, Gobert's going to catch it and go up. The pass was poor, which allowed people to have a dig at it. And Fournier gets tripped up, and that is going to be an over and back call going against France. It was a good look, he just got tripped up. As they easily get it into. Gets it up to the young end, Molare. Molare turns the corner, going against Cordinier. He wants a pick. Didibe, no. They find Dali. Dali penetrates on Nicolo and scores at the buzzer. Nice little offensive set. Patience there by Cote d'Ivoire. Well, that's good. That my, I was worried Molare gave it up with four seconds to go, and it's like, I don't want it. But really good decision by Dali, and that's building on his performance in the last game where he really was. One of the few really consistent performers for this Cote d'Ivoire lineup. Decolo almost dribbles out of bounds, finds Fournier, shot clock. No one on Decolo. He's left open in the corner. No good. Ba, who you and I have grown to love as this tournament has progressed. And turnover, though, by Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah, if the Cote d'Ivoire plays solid here and, and defensively get after it, they really could get after this French team. This French team looks a little. So we say they're not engaged yet. No. Yeah, you can feel that. But that shot is good by Cordinier. And you will see uh, France actually have a little black armband on all of their jerseys. And I will talk about that at a uh, stoppage of play. I'll let you know why who they are showing their respects to. Ulare. Wow, miscommunication defensively there. And a nice little left-handed floater finish by the youngin. Oh, that's two breakdowns where they've actually got to the ring. And Gobert's got to be a bit more active as well. He's such a great presence. He's got to challenge those shots. He's got to fill that middle. Cordinier gives it up to Decolo. They're looking for Yabusele, but they go inside to Gobert. He's stripped by Ba. Cedric Ba kicks it out. And that shot was short, but they save it. And Cedric Boss says, well, no one's going to get me. I'll shoot it. I'm one of those guys who thinks you can't add. There's no switch to turn it off and turn it on. So France have got to find a way to snap themselves out a little bit. They haven't turned it on yet no. in this tournament, in That's my true. opinion. That's you true. know, they came out, actually, the first half against Canada, I want to say they were motivated and they believed. Yeah. And then... I don't know, I can't even describe what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that big win for Latvia over France as well. Well, they were, they were motivated in that game. They just couldn't finish. They were motivated, they, yeah. they couldn't finish the game off. They played good for 39 minutes. Yabusele shots off the mark. Or they were up for 39 minutes, yeah. let's say. Yeah. Mulare kicks it out to Cedric Ba. Ba. Mulare. Jump shot is fouled as France are not happy and they're going to have to be careful with their reaction. And it is going to be a technical foul as well. Not sure who the technical is going on. I think it's on Fournier. He seemed like the one who had the least uh, reaction. See, look, the, Mulari changed his, sh his, sh his shot off, uh, as he was going up. And uh, 
I just thought he, was, he just tried to avoid the contact. Obviously, the official saw some contact. Right. I'm gonna get a look at it right now. So you see him change the shot, but there was a foul across the arm, possibly. But not definitely, you know, I'm not sure. I just think it's too early to have that kind of reaction yeah, by absolutely. some of these in cream. Oh, so there you see, I didn't see that reaction. Uh, we saw it there on video after why Fournier picked up the technical foul. There's been three minutes played. It's a frustrating tournament. Everyone on this French team, from coaches, staff, players, Big wigs in the Federation cannot be happy. Everyone is frustrated. I don't think you can outwardly show your frustration no. three but minutes into a game. Now, this is your last game at this tournament. Yeah, what you have to show is, is, is a professionalism, if that's the right word, and a pride in playing for your country. And just get out there and win the game, and then go away from the game respecting the situation and not reacting to that. Yeah. Whether it was a good call or a bad call, there is no justification for the reaction. Right. Well, I guess you could say they got lucky as Decola brings the ball up the court. Fournier now. They go inside, go bare. Nice look to the rolling big. That was better, sharper. They executed, but that's the way to react to you if you think you've been hard done by. Deal with things, the things that you can control. You mentioned it right at the beginning. What you can control is what's going on in the game right now. And that's the way to react to the frustration, not... You're not here to make the referees better. You're, yeah. here, you're here to play and, and win games and try and qualify, all those things. Other people make the referees better. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just like players are evaluated by their coaching staff and the federations, yeah. <laughs> referees are evaluated after every game. Cedric Ba is double teamed in the post. Nice help by Decolo, but no one there to pick up Mulare. Fournier comes up with a rebound. Skip pass corner. Cordinier is fouled. So Mulare in that situation can't foul because Cordinier is going the baseline. There's no space to play. Just move your feet, play defense. Get him to reverse it out fine. You know, you should keep your hands way out. Fournier thought about the shot before he caught it. And Dadier comes up with the steal and the easy two-point basket. I haven't said Yabusele's name too much yet. Other than uh, at the beginning, we were doing the starting five and talking about how much we love him. Gobert, easy two-point basket. And draws a foul, so he'll earn himself a trip to the free throw line. And this is another one of those scenarios. We had this with Yavuseli when they were playing against uh, Latvia. Latvia couldn't stop him in the low block. France went away from it. Now they, they really could give Gobert touches every time down the floor. Yeah. T trust him. You know, if, he's not, if he doesn't like the options, he'll kick it out. But until they find a way to stop him getting the ball, just keep feeding them. Just let him play. Well, misses the three-point play opportunity with that free throw miss. And uh, Mulare. France showing kind of a zone. Dadier takes Gobert off the dribble, but dribbles right out of bounds. As you see Kone there on the bench in the uh, zip up. He's, he's done a really good job for the team and he hurt his ankle in the first game. Apparently it's a reoccurring ankle injury. Don't know how he played in the second, third game, but he did. Jacolo takes his time by Fournier. And they've run this play before and they found Gobert. This time they find him on the seal. If, if the Cote d'Ivoire carry on playing their defense with these rules, Gobert's open every time down the floor. And that time, and sometimes he will get criticism for not wanting to be a, you know, a major threat. Because that's not his game week in, week out. But on this occasion, and in this game so far, he's like showing to the basketball, expecting to catch it. And he was one on three when he called it there. So just keep feeding them until Cote d'Ivoire find a way to stop him getting touches. Well, 
We still have over five minutes, 18 seconds in this quarter. France are now going to go to the free throw line every foul from here on out. Well, that one's good. I mean, really, for me, Gobert could have easily a 20-point game today. Wow, if, he, if uh, Colet gives him minutes, absolutely guaranteed. Nice press break, leads to a three on two, and Tape not able to finish, but they come up with the offensive rebound. They couldn't have beat the press any better than that. No. Tape's literally, that's a layup. You know, he's got to finish that. Zuzua. He had a quiet game the other day. That time takes it all the way to the rack and gets the bucket and the foul. What they wouldn't have given for that the other day because they really were struggling at times for points in the half court. And Zuzuwa can give them that and gave them that game day one. Game day two against Iran it was, well, right? As well, yeah, yeah two, the first yeah, yeah, two, two games. Two. Yeah, and he really. went quiet. Coming off the bench, you kind of thought he was this spark for them Instant and then all offense, of a sudden yeah. the next two games didn't even look to shoot yeah. players you know players <laughs> we have a little full court zone back into a full court press back into a zone here by Cote d'Ivoire they got to find the shooters though and they don't get to Cordinier so he makes another three-point basket this time the other side of the corner the other corner Cedric Ba gets it to Daly. Daly back to the point guard. A little shake and bake. Doesn't get by Fournier. Daly finds Cedric Ba. Ba step back. That's a tough shot. No good. And Gobert comes up with a rebound. Uh, Gobert could have amazing numbers if he plays minutes. He could easily have almost a 20-20 night, I oh, think. Yeah. <laughs> And they should try to give him a 20 20 night because he's just, they're not going to stop him. Well, I don't know why he didn't go up. Yeah, yeah draw the just foul. Go up. Decolo has to put it up, and he's fouled on the jump shot. Not a smart foul there as contest the shot. Tape, you have the height advantage yep. against Cole. You didn't need to foul. Shot clock was almost at one. Yep. You know, they'd, they'd switch, they've done everything they have been asked to do by coach. You don't foul the jump shooter anyway, but not one second on the clock. He's had to take a tough one. If he makes it, he makes it. Don't send Nando De Cola to the free throw line because you know, he is and has been his whole career. He's a plus 90% free throw shooter. And he's, he's that good that he can overcome that coach's uh, curse as well. <laughs> but no, he's, uh, Tarpe had a great game on game day uh, five, uh, four for this uh, for this team. And he's just not started at the same level. Tournament play and at this level, you've got to come day in, day out and be consistent. He's, he's coming, he's missed a two-footer. Didn't really collect a pass, then he fouls. You know, you can't, you cannot afford for your coach not to know what they're going to get from you. Well, France with a couple substitutions here. And easily broke the press break there. France now back into a little zone. They sign Cedric. Ah, no good. Tape can't follow the offensive rebound, though. Yabusele is pushing it for France. Gets it up to Francisco. Francisco gets it back. He fakes and drives the other way and finishes around the basket. So nice, strong take by him. And almost come up with a steal. They do. Yabusele's first look of the game is a three-point shot. He's been quiet. He hasn't seemed as aggressive. He seems focused, but not as aggressive as we've seen uh, other games by that man. But how much better do they look? They get sharper defensively. Then they look to run. And they look a different level team. They are a different level they team. They are. Yeah. They don't look one, they are one. But then, compounded by the sloppy turnover, they just don't need... This is so unlike France. The, the France that we've 
comes to the one thing that set them apart from a lot of teams where the talent level is the same is that they knew how to play day in day out at tournaments and the one thing they've really fallen down with here is coming in and playing back-to-back -back games consistent level during games well, you said it, sloppy turnover for France. So ball back to Cote d'Ivoire as they lead by five with just under 2.30 in the first. Tape gets it, nowhere to go. France in that zone now. Fofana who checked into the game, his first shot is good. He's, you know, I think he's played the most for this team. Disappointing game, obviously, in their last game against Lebanon for him. Corginier finds Francisco and he's going to put up the three point shot. Ball tips it out though. Sweet ball handling, shot clock expiring. Corginier no good. Fofana now, he already made one three-point shot, just takes it right at Nikola Batum. Kobo finds Francisco, who is wide open. And Fall is the one who tips that ball to a Kobo, so good job on the boards there by France, giving themselves second chance opportunities. Fofana, nice start for him since he's checked in. Finds Diabate cutting. Diabate finds Zazua. And nice ball movement and passing by the Cote d'Ivoire. Absolutely. Absolutely. Really moved the ball well. Good decision to kick it. And Zuzu, Zuzua is back to game day two. Yes. This is the fun Zuzua. Yeah. Kobo is almost picked off by Fofana. His floater is good. Diabate had that big, big fourth quarter for Cote d'Ivoire, where they got their only win in the tournament against Iran. And that's a turnover. And Francisco is going to slow it down. Diabate can't, can't, just can't be that way. It was, the pass was probably a little bit too firm, but OK, he missed it. Get back. Right. No, no histrionics to the bench, you're five on four. Kobo is open in the corner. He takes his time, and for good reason, as he sees that shot go in at the buzzer. So nice little finish by France. As after 10 minutes, they lead by four, 21 to 25 over Cote d'Ivoire. not playing with that intensity at the defensive end to give them the win that they need to stay at the potential to make that qualifying tournament. Well, there's the Courtside 1891 app. Go ahead and download it and follow all the basketball, not just from this World Cup, but all the basketball around the world all year long. And just a quick, I mentioned those little, you see the armbands, uh, the black uh, stripe on the France jerseys as they are paying respects to Ludovic Vati, who passed away at 34 years of old. He was in the uh, INSEP program, played on a U16, U18 French national teams. He played with uh, Nicolas Batum when, uh, on an under U19 team. And uh, he just passed away a couple days ago, unfortunately, of a heart condition. Um, so... Our thoughts are obviously with uh, all those who knew him, his family, his children, wife, and obviously uh, the French fans and the French players. Uh, and Nicolas Batum uh, gave a very nice sentiment on social media towards him. So it's obviously, uh, you know, a shock and, and something unexpected, especially 34-year-old, uh, still relatively young wow. man. Very young man. Yeah. Cote d'Ivoire, good job coming out of the first quarter there. 
first two points of this quarter. You see who's on the court for France, and Coach Lafoire falling back into it's their box, and they're on Okobo. You see Zuzua not leaving Okobo. Francisco now, a little shake and bake. That is a tough, tough shot from the corner as Huck was winding down. Giabate almost loses the ball again. And Zuzua, nowhere to go. Nice defense there. And now they get it back up to Diabate. He's going to have to do something, though. He's going to have to put it up really quick, and he does. And that is going to be a 34, a 24 second shot clock, clock violation. So nice defensive possession there by France. But Coach Collet, I guess, is not too happy about something that he sees. So he has called a timeout very quickly at the start of the second quarter. This will be interesting. Your French is so much better than mine, but it'll be interesting to see how he, how he just he delivers this. You don't take a, that quick a timeout without being hacked off. I just wanted to talk offensively about uh, the box and one that uh, Cote d'Ivoire have come out in this second quarter with. Yeah, I thought that might be the only thing he, yeah. he could, like, unless he was really disappointed with something. Oh, but, uh, one minute. <laughs> But it's all it's also like does he it's almost disappointing that he needs to take a time out to say there's a box and one, we're gonna run this stuff. Yeah. Should have been able to go through Francisco or whoever else is on the floor. But if he feels comfortable in the way the game is progressing, wants to try and get better on the floor, well you need to fix it, he's a timeout, then let's just do it. And they're staying in that box. So uh, let's see. Well, Utara, if you're left open, why not shoot? I'm not sure that was the offense that Coach Collet drew. It didn't look like it because he looked like he was drawing more than what just happened yeah. on that offensive set by France. Nice tip from behind, but Okobo is going to be called for a foul. I mean, it's like one of those things, and, and, I, and I'm not aiming this at uh, Qatara at all. But like when there's a box and one or something like that, there's a reason you're open and the other guys guarded. As in, they're happy for you to shoot it. And after one pass to the offense, I'm sure that's not what Monson Collet was looking for his team to run. Diabate. Long three-point shot by Zuzua, and I like the way that he's come out in this game. Disappeared a little bit the last couple games. And he just, he wasn't looking for his own shot. We questioned some of his shots in the first few, uh, first two games, I guess. Maybe he listened to our commentary. We didn't mean it that way. <laughs> no. <laughs> Francisco. They go inside to fall. Fall. Spin move baseline. He gets the other side of the basket, and it's going to be a three-point play opportunity. It's exactly the same as Gobert. They just can't handle the size inside. Clear foul. And if they've got that type of matchup, even if it's the box, then the back of that box has got to go and help sooner than that. And uh, the big, whoever the big is for France at any given time is going to be, should see the ball a lot of the time. Should see it almost every time down the floor where there isn't anything early in transition. Hey, it's still only a one point game. And yeah. We saw a game yesterday where if a team hangs around, you don't need the right play at the right time in the game. Fofana, he's made one today and make that two. And he's had a nice little uh, few minutes now off the bench for Cote d'Ivoire, especially offensively. He had a tough day at the office in their loss against Lebanon. Ball. He thought he maybe danced a little underneath. Take just, a look. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, maybe. He just shuffled <laughs> his feet when he caught the ball. Cote d'Ivoire almost going. They will take a three. You can go inside. Diabate finds Zuzua. Zuzua's three-point shot rolls in and out. 
Defensive rebound, France. They got numbers. Wutara running the floor hard. No good. Smalls man on the floor comes up with it. Batum takes his time, then takes a little bit more time, and then shoots it, but it's no good. Fall tips it out. Kobo finds Francisco, and Francisco goes up and draws the contact. This sort of field goal percentage stays. They are France going to win the game because there's no way that the Cote d'Ivoire will shoot this good for the whole game. The Cote d'Ivoire got to find a way to try and make this a little bit tougher on France at the defensive end. And the box isn't having the effect because they're just throwing it inside France. So the coach has got to come up with a different, a different look to try and give his team a bit of an advantage. Only trailing by one as Diabate takes it at fall. No good. Offensive rebound by Sidibe. Uh, Francisco now. Miscommunication leads to a turnover. Fofana pushing the press. Finds Zuzua. And Zuzua from the corner. It's good. As defense leading to offense for Cote d'Ivoire. They take a four point lead, six minutes left in this quarter before halftime. And again, France kind of looking a little out of sorts offensively. Utara finds fall. He's not going to shoot from out there. Okobo. Might have traveled again, doesn't matter as Cote d'Ivoire come up with the ball. Diabate, nowhere to go. Zuzua, nice first half for him. Shot with pressure, Batum just knocks that ball out of the hands of Sidibe. Uh, Batum, though, then turns the ball over. Diabate wants to slow it down a little bit. Sidibe's shot is no good. Kobo. Get it up to Francisco. Utara, his shot is no good. So, France a little out of sorts offensively. Dadier drives baseline, thought there was a foul, but it was a no call. And now they got numbers if they want to run, but Okobo slows it down. And Batum is able to knock the offensive rebound out to Francisco. Fall looks very tired. Zero hesitation, and that's going to be a shot clock violation, in my opinion. Yeah. Referee on the baseline says foul. From my angle, it looked like a shot clock violation. Can they review this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's the right call. Oh, absolutely the right call. I mean, you make the point about about France looking out of sorts. See, like. And now, like, they're going to have the technical foul on Kole because he came up and was in the face of the official. So this is the second technical on France in this first half. Oh, and that's a technical as well? Yeah, because Kole, after they changed the call, he oh. he ran to the sideline and walked into the oh, face. I didn't see. I was watching Yeah, the, the into the replay. face of the official. Okay, so the second technical foul going against France. That's going to be on coach this time. See, and the thing... 
you, you made this point right at the beginning of the game about what you're in control of. They're not in control of the officials. They're not in control of the, the you know, the off the court stuff and everything else. What they're in control of is how they play in the game. Their defense is, to say the least, lacking intensity. And then they stand around on offense because they're not really in the, in the flow of the game. You know, and there comes a point where you've just got to, as, as Nicola Platoon said, got to look at yourself. Well, intensity, you asked for it, yeah. Francisco. Nice defense leads to a go bear flush. And that's how you deal with it. You don't yeah. deal with it with the, with the criticism of the official. You deal with it by your performance. And Terry Tarpe checking into the game for the first time for France. We talked a lot about Yabusele before the game started, and he, he's, I think he's my fi favorite player on this French team, but Terry Tarpe is not too far behind, in my opinion. And, and he sticks out on this French team because every moment he's in the game, he's trying to make things happen at the defensive end. Doesn't do anything at the offensive end he's not capable of, but what he's capable of, he does it extremely well at a great level. I think he's, he's done himself no harm in terms of a place on this French team going forward over these games. Yep. Well, a couple substitutions here. Uh, Spofan, a great substitution he had in the minutes that he has produced in this first half for Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, Vavesa Fofana is going to go to the bench probably for the rest of the, until the second half. Tarpe penetrates and that's going to be foul on the pass. So I'm not, I, well, I, don't, I have no doubt. I'm sure France will be fine in this game, but they do need just to I don't know if it's respect the opponent or if it's respect the situation. Cordigne out to Gobert. Gobert penetrates and can't score, but he was fouled on that shot attempt. That's a great, great decision. It's poor, poor closeout, but Gobert saw the drive lane. He'll be disappointed he didn't complete. And this should be a three-point play, but... He's come back into the game and all of a sudden they're just dominant again on the inside. He needs touches, he needs touches for the whole game. And he knocks down the first of two. Second one, though. Mulare wants to set it up. To Dibe. To Dadje. They go back to the point guard, the youngin. And the other Fofana, not a bad look by Cote d'Ivoire, and they had to make France defend the entire possession. Francisco, though, somehow gets all the way to the basket. As we see France tie the game on that Sylvain Francisco made basket. And another three-point attempt. That one maybe a little bit too early in the shot clock. Okobo, Cordinier, he's in the corner, left wide open. That was well off. They got numbers. And it's going to be a foul while shooting, as I think Tarpe was trying to foul for a while, and the referee called it on the shot. See, right here, I believe he was trying to foul. Oh, he'd already fouled. Yeah. Referees have that tendency. If they, if they see them going, they just let it go, so it becomes a shooting foul. Not many of the officials accept that's what they do, but... Abu's had a, a, has always had an impact. Sometimes not always positive, but normally the tempo gets a bit quicker when he comes in. Yeah. Well, not able to finish that free throw and make it a three-point play. As we are just under two minutes, Cote d'Ivoire playing fundamentally well, I think, right now. I think they're doing what they want to do, and... 
they've they've frustrated maybe France a little yeah. bit on offense because yeah right now okay we've seen them be a little bit more aggressive especially by that man right there Sivan Francisco getting the free throw line but there was few moments continuous offenses that looked out of sorts by France. No, we don't we normally talk about momentum going into the half time and if the Cote d'Ivoire can maintain what they've been doing for the last couple of minutes, what they wouldn't give to go in four or five up. Give themselves a little bit of a breathing space. Yep. It's about who gets the shot. Mulari, when he gets open, is a really good finisher and shooter. Fouled on the play, but that'll only be the fourth team foul for France. So there's not an enormous amount of three point throw on the floor for Cote d'Ivoire at the moment. No. I mean, Mulari had a no. really, at that when he first came in in his first minutes, he had a couple of threes, but he hasn't really yeah. looked that consistent since. This is where they really miss Kone in situations like this, where he can create for himself as well. Well, you don't need to shoot a three if you can shoot a wide open pull up jump shot, and that's exactly what Mulari did there. A little full court pressure here to try and speed France up, maybe. Oh, good to, job. Don't need to foul, though. They, they, everyone's going after the ball with Gob, with Gobert, has it? Francisco now trying to make something happen. He somehow, or somehow I should say, Gobert catches that. Yeah, it's more somehow Gobert yeah. killed, caught it. That's going to be a charge. Yeah. Good job there. Nice read by Cordinier, sacrificing his body to take the charge. As I believe, there you see it. It was a good pass, he just needed to stop his momentum, which he couldn't, and Cordinier taking one for the team. So France now have called a timeout. We have just under a minute to play, and I'm guessing Colet wants to talk about something offensively and possibly defensively. Yeah. I mean, just before he starts, Fofana coming in, the energy's been great. His ability to be in control, that's what's hurting the Cote d'Ivoire. Here we see uh, Zuzua's performance in this first half and a lot of players, actually, what it is, a lot of players, in my opinion, have been stepping up for Cote d'Ivoire in this first half, and I think that's why we see them up four right now. Yep. They, they can get a defensive stop, and then a score heading into halftime. That'd be a nice uh, performance, as you see his stats. 13 points today, he's been averaging six a game in this tournament. And he, he's had two good ones and two bad ones, so uh, that's why it's down at six. We're talking him up as instant <laughs> offense. And he, he can be. He had, yeah, he had double digits in those other games, the, yeah. the better ones. Yeah, it may have been, it could have been worth taking Mike uh, Fofana out and going back with more of a scorer to end the, in the quarter, in the half. We'll see. Skip pass is almost out of bounds, but Rudy Gobert is left open underneath instead. I don't know how Cordinier caught that pass, to be honest. And Tarpe doing Tarpe things. Okobo. France kick it out. Tarpe is left open. And Cordinier there with a nice timing on the offensive rebound. So too many opportunities, in my opinion, for France here. They go inside. They find Cordinier inside out action. And that's a three-point bucket. And we're going to have a timeout by Cote d'Ivoire. They have 9.8 seconds left. There you see the nice pass inside to Gobert. Gobert knows he has a shooter in the corner and an easy three-point bucket. And that's the thing. And we keep saying give Gobert the ball. You, he's a great player. He'll make the right decision as he did right then. But he has to have inside touches. There needs to be paint touches for France, almost as a rule. Got to touch it there before we shoot the perimeter shot. Let's take a listen to the Cote d'Ivoire. First of all, they will press. 
First of all, they will press. Hey, out goes Ba. You go here. Mike, Zolo, uh, you and Charles. Okay? Hey, if they deny, you get the ball, run, and we try to make. Hey, you play head. I'm Pick and roll, pick and pop with him. Okay, rest of you spread. Let's go. Well, we were talking about if they get a stop and they get down the floor, they could go in possibly six, possibly seven up. They need to score here to retake the lead. One turnover, one. You know, if, if Cedric Barr can get out to challenge the shot, then the rest of the team can get across to get into the help position so that Gorbea's not so wide open. It's every possession on every movement of the ball. You, at this level, you have to be playing and they just get broken down so often by not everybody doing that. Diabate goes right at Gobert and finishes at the buzzer. So a big time move by one of the vet veterans of this Cote d'Ivoire team. No fear going up against one of the best shot blockers in the world is Solo Diabate as he is all smiles. Well, they got the lead back, like you said, Mark. It is halftime here in Jakarta. Cote d'Ivoire leading France 41 to 40 at half. Well, again, offensively, these stats are, are, are reasonable stats, you know, like the work France, I know it's only 33%, they want slightly more, but it's not bad. You know, the rebounding numbers, the, everything is decent. It's not as if there's a bad game offensively. You just need to see more, more defense. You need to see more. France going with Sylvain Francisco in the starting lineup instead of Evan Fournier. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with, you know, being a little bit more intense, picking up defensively. As you see the World Cup app right there, go ahead and download it, scan that QR code, and follow news conferences, highlights, top 10 plays of the day and of the games. And nice little crowd here for this game. I was literally just about to say, Shona, that, you know, for the, for the fact that there's not a lot of traveling fans for either country, there's a few French people in the crowd. Uh -huh. But like this is this is people from Jakarta coming out to see the World Cup. It's been a big success here. It's all over the streets, all over. So our news features and stuff that this great tournament is here. So it's great to see these these people come out to see well to see France. Let's, let's not let's be honest about it. And nice cut there by Cordinier as he gets his first two points of the second half. And second half action underway. France just took the lead on that lay at Tape getting a start. And no good with that shot as Cedric Ba, the captain for Cote d'Ivoire, is on the bench. And also Fofana. Well, Gobert was fouled. As we always say, better late and right than, uh, than wrong and early. They did such a poor job uh, helping on the roll. It took Tarpe so long to get back. And it's, you can't play underneath Gobert if you're going to help across. You've got to try and make it a tougher pass. It just took so long. And at this level, you can't be that long in that rotation. Otherwise, you can't play the hard hedge. It's just too easy for France. Well, Gobert misses the first of two. And that one kisses the front of the rim, but goes in. Full court pressure here by France. And they get it over. Back to Mulare, who started this game for Cote d'Ivoire and starting this half in place of Kone. Fofana to Dali in the corner. Dali's shot is no good. And France now. Cordinier picks up. The pass that was a little bit in front of him and finishes easily. Coach Prokis might need a timeout here because I don't know what the uh, what, what you're looking at when you've got a wide open foul line jump shot and you want to try and go over Rudy Gobert. Just <laughs> shoot the wide open 12, 14 footer. Mulare. And 
and another turnover. Hey, Shona, at the moment, every time we got a great angle out there, every time that someone from the Cote d'Ivoire looks down the keyway, Rudy Gobert's there. Yeah. But he they takes up a lot of room. And they still want to go there. They're not trying to drag him out. And it, whether it's, whether they're going to take Mulare out, I'm not sure Mulare was the issue. It's not about the offense you run as such. It's about the, you know, the decisions you make within it. And they've made poor decisions in these first two minutes. Ducolo now gets it up to Yabusele, who, ah, and he steps out of bounds. How many times have you said, do they not understand the size of the <laughs> court? So those guys that catch it and take that back yeah. step and, and that before and they go, go forward. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how often you tell them, now don't take that back step. Just builds up that momentum. Diabate, so shake and bake. He goes at Gobert, but kicks it out. Dally's three-point shot, front rim. Gobert with another rebound to Colo now. Which for Yabusele is actually going to receive two screens and his three point shot is good. I think that's the first time I've really seen DeColo come off a screen and actually look aggressively for his own shot in this entire tournament. Yeah. Well, you called it. Coach is going to have to call a timeout, and that is exactly what Dayan Prokic has done for Cote d'Ivoire. So let's listen in. Eight. He's got to deal with 8-0, though. Could have called it two possessions ago, in my opinion. But let's see what he says now. Playing eight. Next offense. Work. Nisene. Solo. Nisene. Ba. Waf. It's five. Dali. Eight. Here. Kendo. Here. Move, play pick, step up. Do you understand? Yeah. Wow. Here, missing a hand off and play step up. Do you understand? Roll. You got the ball, huh? No, you got the ball. No, I'm all here. Get, he just get the ball and hands it off to you. And you play. And I go out there. Okay. Yes. See, the other, the other thing, Shirley, it was really clear on the last possession. We're going to get another replay of France going on this 8 0 run. Susan Wall has 13 points. The Abadi penetrated wide open. The whole French defense is below the foul line, and they just don't find the player that's open. And, and in this instance, the player who should get the ball anyway. And it's just their, their, their issue, and it's, like, it's not what they run, it's how you run it. They haven't given Zuzua a look, and they've gone 8 0. Right. Cedric Ba into the game for Cote d'Ivoire. He goes against. Gobert, nowhere to go though. They kick it up to Zuzua. He's gonna have to put up a prayer. He does, and no shot clock violation as France come up with the rebound. Ducolo. Just it's contagious. Just no one. It's contagious. No one came over to help. So seven points for him but on it, that basket. How much more aggressive was he though? It's great to see Ducolo playing like that. Well, nice response and a desperately needed basket there by the Cote d'Ivoire as Fofana knocks down his three-point shot. And he has 11 points today, three of three from the three-point line. Yabusele goes inside to the big man. He keeps it high. He finishes high. Diabate, baseline penetrations. Dali, corner three is good. So better offense here. Penetration kick, a little bit more yeah. movement by Cote d'Ivoire. Francisco just stops and shoots. He says, are you not going to defend me? I'll just shoot the ball. Not really a play on the ball, but a foul will be called against Ticolo. Cote d'Ivoire get it in easily. Now they're looking for Zuzua to get it to him. Good job defensively. Cordini getting back in front. And nice hands, picks the ball as Francisco just goes all the way. 
So nice defensive possession, but they didn't get back. And Suzuwa probably had a layup, but three-point shot is worth more than a layup. For me, again, France have a layup. Wide open. No one else runs the floor, and they give up a wide open three the other way. They're, they're almost in the stage. It's not the way that we're used to seeing. No, France play. it's not. It's all the way we're not used to seeing France play. Well, we're not used to seeing them play in these kind of games no. either, though. No. Zuzua, Fofana. He goes baseline and not. Not the best option there, as they had a little bit of an advantage. Well, they were three on two. And he goes behind the backboard, and he's got the ball from Zuzua. If, if the defense drops and, and levels off, go back to Zuzua. There's a huge opportunity here for the coach of Wire if they can just play at that level where they're not hurting themselves. Francisco's shot is blocked by Cedric Ba, and Fofana throws the ball up. I think he wanted a foul but nothing was called. Didn't look like it. And now you have to wonder why he doesn't get a technical foul because they gave the technical fouls early in the game. But, but, I'm, but I'm wondering what actually, like, was he swearing? Was he using foul language? We what? don't know what? exactly what's being said. But he held the ball and ran around the court yeah. disagreeing with the referee's decision. And everyone knows he's disagreeing with the referee's decision. And they've already made the braces of saying, we're not gonna have that and we've already given two technicals to France. And I'm not, I'm a very big critic of France the way they talk to the officials far too much, but if the officials are gonna start doing it, they've gotta be consistent. And we don't know exactly what was said, obviously, but it didn't look good. Nicolo. Oh, nice pass to Yabusele. And that's gonna be a blocking call. I believe he might've been inside the charge circle and that's why. that pass yeah he's on the line yeah because he definitely didn't move he had he was standing there but he was inside the charge circle yeah as Fofana coming out and trying to inspire his teammates on the bench there Fournier has not played a lot today Back one hit off the front of the rim. And France will stay with a seven point lead. Outscored Cote d'Ivoire 17 to nine in this quarter. And that layup's no good by Diabate. Gobert's running, but Silva gets it back to Decolo. Decolo's shot is good. Well, it's a little bit more like Nando Decolo that we've come to expect. I mean, that's catch, shoot, comes off screen, catch, shoot. Dadie to Sidibe. Sidibe shoots. And I believe Yabusele is going to be called for a rebounding foul. Well, there you see Fournier checking into the game. So this is that rebounding foul just kind of pushed uh, Cedric Pa out of the way to get the rebound. Diabate holds on to it, he wants to take it, and he does, and he will finish. And that foul's gonna go against Cordinier, so nice body control by Diabate here. Takes the hit. It was a great finish by him. Absolutely tremendous. Gorbea got caught underneath Sadibi, so he couldn't really come out and contest it, but... It's just not taking the full advantage of where they are. There are still only eight down. They've got a big opportunity here. Well, weren't able to take advantage on that three-point play. Yabusele. Yeah, 
Nice passing by France. Fournier's layup's no good. And now Cote d'Ivoire, they're pushing the tempo. They're attacking. They just throw it up to Sidibe. Nice little hesitation. Got Yabusele off his feet as he scores two points. So you said it. They were down eight. Make it six. And just over three minutes to play in the third quarter. Just got to be solid now with their defense. Make France make a tough one. Not a layup. Well, not able to make the layup, but Cordinier draws a foul. So he'll go to the free throw line. Yeah. It's kind of disappointing. They make a little run, and then that happens. <laughs> yeah, it's like no one committed to help because he was, he'd was beaten, he'd beaten uh, Diabate from a long way out as such, way beyond the three-point line. There's no reason they shouldn't be able to protect the drive lane to the hoop. All right, they might make that well pass it to the corner. Well, then you're then you're counting your teammate to help you. And that one's good. I mean, France are having a disastrous night from the free throw line. I mean, they're under 50%. It's a good job they are. Otherwise, they would be. Not so much yeah. out of sight, but up 14, 15 points. As you see Cordinier there come up, and Okobo checks into the game for France. A little full-court pressure here by France. Token full-court pressure. Diabate. Going to wait for the screen. He uses it. And little floater is no good. Fight for the rebound. It's going to go off the hands of Gobert. So ball back and a new shot clock for Cote d'Ivoire. Diabate looking for Dadier. Finds him. He thought about it. And nice cut on the baseline, no good. And it will be a shot clock violation. Oh, it was a nice little cut, it nice was, find. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 227 in the third and Mustafa foul falls coming. They should be out of cope. He's still big, he's still a real asset to this French team, but just do a bit that they can be a little bit more aggressive on the ball with fall in the game. Fournier has been quiet tonight. And Mustafa Fav clears out to Dibe, but can't convert. And miscommunication. I don't think you're gonna go over this French team though in those kind of passes, Okobo. Well, they had, they had three guys back there. Yeah. I mean, Yabusele, spin move, no good. Diabate finds Dadie, Dadie, skip pass to Dali. They go inside to Ba. And tough, tough take is Diabate. With a few French defenders around him, rises above them, and look at that. Forces the turnover, and now he's easily going to finish, and Vincent Coré does not like what he sees. The last few possessions here for France, so he's going to call a timeout as the lead has now cut back down to four in favor of France. We have a minute and 23 seconds, and what you felt like was a game France was going to run away with is in the third quarter. Cote d'Ivoire says, no, not yet. Let's listen in to the French timeout. And I, I, this is uh, this is the scenario with 
really been talking about the whole game because France are really imposing themselves on this game because their defense is not what we come to expect from the level of defense. They're letting the Cote d'Ivoire hang around. A couple of turnovers and it's back to a four point game. Well, we saw a game yesterday where a team hung around and in the last two, three minutes went ahead because you don't then have a chance to rectify it. And Terry Tarpey's in the game. That's always a good sign for France. But it's just uh, uh, Nicolas Batum's in the game. So, I mean, I know at the end of the day, let's say Cote d'Ivoire get the big upset win over France. You know, France would be like, yeah, but we weren't really playing well and this game meant nothing to us. You're still playing in a World Cup. Yeah. Every I, game when you wear your country's jersey across your chest should mean something. No such thing as a dead game in international basketball. Diabate yeah, maybe trying to do a little bit too much on that possession. Lots of time on the shot clock still, but Dale says, I'm open, so I'm going to let it fly, and he does. Wow. Zone. They go inside to fall. They find a Kobo. And Fog takes it out as Ba. Again, a late, late foul. Ball was far away. Fournier hasn't even attempted an outside shot yet. No need to foul him. He's going away from the basket. If he makes that leaning away from the bucket from the three-point line, hey, great shot. Let's go the other way. Well, new shot clock for France. And... Kobo, penetration, Batum shoots that one. His three-point shot, front rim, no good. I imagine they're gonna hold it for the last shot here. 10 seconds in this quarter, and Cote d'Ivoire take the lead again. Dally, penetration against Ball, no call. Batum to Okobo, Okobo, that's gonna be way too late after the final buzzer. Well, missed opportunity for the Cote d'Ivoire on that last possession, as after three quarters, France are up one, 61 to 62. Nice little end of the quarter for Cote d'Ivoire as you felt like France ran away with it in the first three minutes of that quarter. Well, there are those stats again. Everybody's over 40%, except the trouble is one of those numbers is 44% from the free throw line. Eight for 18 for France. Probably a bit one of the indicators of how not fully engaged, if that's the way to word it, they are. Because at the start of that third quarter, as Sean has said, they moved the ball, they opened it out, double digit lead, everything looked normal. They had a couple of, they really did generate turnover, ran the floor well. The Colo was really aggressive. You're going to see him shoot the three here. He also took and you know, came off the screen later before he sat down. But Cote d'Ivoire hung, hung around. They, they were given the opportunity. In a few years' time, they're yeah. not going to go, oh, yeah, but. What no. they're going to say is that Cote d'Ivoire beat France for the first time. And they really, they, it, there's an outside chance this could help them. If they win the group, they really do give themselves an outside chance of getting to the Olympic qualifying tournament. Not direct to the Olympics, but they may sneak into that. Not direct to the Olympics, because we do know now who are going directly to the Olympics. That's a story. That is a story. But first, we got a story here because we got 10 more minutes, and we'll leave you in suspense. We'll tell you who that is later on. <laughs> but it is a story. It's a great, great story. Well, they're trailing by one. There's 10 minutes left. Can they get the big upset win? Diabate. Oh, finds Sidibe. Cutting behind him, and Fall is going to be called for that foul. So nice little action there. Yeah. I like how you, I thought Diabate was going to go up, but right here, good job. And that takes is, the big defender. Yeah, that was as smart as they've been all game. You know, they took Fall completely out of the middle. Stevie so makes the throws, gets the lead. You almost don't want him to lead too soon. Yeah. Game is tied. And now they go up one. 
They were leading at half by one. Fournier. Okobo. Okobo. It's a tough shot. Almost an offensive foul, in my opinion. Yeah. Ball, though, with the rebound. Fournier's first three-point shot of the game. And I think that's going to be credited to Batu yeah. with the offensive rebound. Yeah, the referee is a signal, too. And it's no surprise when it comes to those effort plays that it's Batu. And now he's at the defensive end doing the same. Well, there's a response. Uh, Dattier knocks down a three-pointer. Such a dangerous team to let hang, hang around here. Well, we've seen France let teams hang around before, and I think that foul is going to go on Cedric Bach. See, that's one of those fouls you don't mind. He has, oh, yeah. he, he come, he has, he has a real chance to get it. It's not one of those, like, last second going to the sideline things where they reach for it. Well, we saw France let Latvia hang around in game day, too. And, uh, you know, uh, what they leave by, like, six, eight at the most? France, no, they got to double digit at one point. Oh, okay. Got up to 11 points in that. So 11. Uh, yeah. And then Lafia just started to climb back in the fourth quarter and it was neck and neck. And they took their first lead with 37 seconds left and that basically ended this tournament for France and or ended their medal hopes. Yeah, I yeah, say. absolutely. And that was on game day too. Sidibe can't go up with it, but he gets it. Dali, no need to force it. There's lots of time on the clock. They get it. Diabate, penetration, Sidibe. That was a nice pass, unfortunate miss. Almost, I'm not sure he was expecting it, almost. Diabati really making some great decisions. That tomb drives baseline, turns it over. Okobo, though, nice hands. No, Diabate with the nice hands. He goes right at Fournier and isn't able to draw the foul. Fournier now, maybe got away with the travel. Tarpe, it's ugly here. Someone's got to slow the, well. Or you got to get back on defense and no call again. Got to finish plays, though. Kobo finds Tarpe, Tarpe, Batum, corner three, ball, knocks the ball out. Kobo goes inside to fall, ball brings it down though, keep the ball high big man. And that one at the buzzer is good for France as they take the lead again. Well, if you give, I mean, even even a French team playing poorly, you give them four shots, they're going to score. And they've missed two layups in the same phase. Diabate's oh, response, oh, though. Oh, oh. oh, goodness me, what a response by Diabate. As he's smiling. At Fournier. <laughs> Batum goes inside, and a foul, no, sorry, a three-second call is going to be called. And, the, and, the, and Mr. Becker from Australia said it wasn't three, it was five. He was in there forever. <laughs> Did he say that? Yeah, he said, it was literally, like, how can you call it three? He said, well, he was in there for five. You know, it's, it was absolutely camped in there the whole time. It's, a, it's not the usual, you don't see that call very often. You have to be, you have to really be camping in there yeah, for, you, for multiple possessions probably yeah you pitched you pitched up your tent <laughs> you're in you're ready you're set they got the camping chairs out absolutely <laughs> they ask you they got the drinks on <laughs> everything's fine how long does how long do they believe they're gonna win this without coming back with Gorbea well now we have Batum on Diabate probably a defensive uh, move here by France Diabate takes it at fall. No good, turns the ball over, France. Oh, Fournier. Just careless with the basketball. Uh, makes him mad as he picks it back up. And France now, they're gonna slow it down a little bit. 
ball to Fournier. Fournier drives. And no good on the layup, and he'll go to the free throw line. Try to find the right way to talk, right? Try to find the right way to talk. Timeout here and well, timeout for Cote d'Ivoire. Listen into the timeout here. For you to rest, only for that. And don't lose your energy on this stuff. Come on. The one thing, the other thing, the other thing, hey, the other thing, when you have a hectic situation like this, don't go crazy. You go one, the other, no, stop, and let's make them work. Let's pull that out, fall to go to, to, to defend the pick and roll. You can play shirt, why don't we play shirt? You're on a three, Dali's on four. Play shirt, try to put the ball down on Francisco. Okay? Hey, when I say two, we are in a zone. Okay. Ide, let's go. Ide. It was well, almost, sorry, go no, on. Yeah, it's been Diabate, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Not only has he scored good from the perimeter, his, his decision making on the pass and the penetration has been so much better. And what a sloppy period of play, both ways. And as coach said, when it gets like that, hey, unless you're sure, let's run what we need to run. Don't just go up and down. One bad decision leading to another bad decision. If Fournier makes this, we're tied with 5.51 to go. And the Cote d'Ivoire have a chance that I don't think coming in here they'd have dreamt they would have. Fournier, very good three point, uh, free throw shooter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I felt like that timeout by Coach uh, Prokic was more just to calm his players yeah. down. He is walking the tightrope, isn't he, with this group? It's like you want him to be aggressive and up-tempo, but just don't go over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> Dali to Dadier. Nice pass inside to Sidibe, but he's blocked by Fall. Trying to go inside to the big man, they do. Skip pass, Fournier, baseline, no good. Diabate, it's been all him the second half. I think that just fell out of his yeah. hand as he was kind of looked at the ref, but it might. It, like the ball just slipped out. It has become a little bit in the last couple of possessions, a little bit, he's gonna come down and he's gonna penetrate. They haven't moved the ball and then penetrated. And perhaps this is where Coach Prokic, and he's doing it. I, I was gonna say, is this a time where you wanna bring Zuzuar in and roll that dice? And there, it's always, it's always a roll of the dice with him. Is he gonna go in and play like he played in the first quarter or how he played in the third quarter? You know, he needs, he needs touches, obviously, can you make can you make me the signal, the official signal? Can you make me the this signal? Okay, thank you, appreciate it. Perhaps challenge. Well, I think Coach uh, Cole maybe wants to try and upgrade, upgrade it. it. Yeah. As the referees didn't want to upgrade, it'll be unusual for this to happen. Let's take a listen. I'm small line following that situation. They're gonna say he made a play on the ball. Yeah. Let's listen okay. in. Can you put the main camera? Okay, let's play. All right. You take the ball. Okay, the camera from behind. This. Let's try to play the ball, I think, no? Yeah. He always try to, to reach the ball. Yeah. Never get it, but it's a normal play. It's a normal play yeah. basketball situation, right? You agree? I agree. Okay. Final so resolution no, is normal foul. Normal foul. It's, not, it's a white uh, it's a 77. Okay. The, the time is the time is right. Yeah, challenge 20, unsuccessful. Yeah, in 22 seconds in the moment of the contact, all right? 22. All right? Challenge unsuccessful, all right? Let's go. Oh, watch out. Well, you heard it. 
You make the same. All my fault. In the shot clock, 22. And you know, like, we've, we've been talking about this a lot. And as you heard the official say, it was a play at the ball. What they used to say was, is it a reasonable, normal action? Yeah. Or is it just... Do you a, slow down? Or you stop in the clock, yeah. you stop in the break. And there, there you can hear the difference, because that's where we were four years ago. Yeah. So there was a... As long as it's a genuine attempt at the ball, they're not calling it as an yep. unsportsman like foul. As unlikely as you are to get it. <laughs> Batum, tip pass, Francisco had time, and he knocks that shot down. Zuzu is in the game. It'll be interesting to see if they can get him a good look. Well, Zuzua doesn't matter how how, good how it bad. goes in, as long as it goes in. But uh, <laughs> how good or bad the look is. He's, if he's, but if he's in that mental place, yeah. great for Cote d'Ivoire. Well, he was really quiet in that third quarter. You said it. They didn't get him the ball enough. They got a five on four. Zuzua, zero hesitation. OK, Cote d'Ivoire throws the dice. He's at 50% with him. Good look for him. Yep. Great look. Cordinier cuts to the basket. Gets it back out. Batum. Shot fake. Easy layup for him. Diabate to Sidibe. Nice action there by Cote d'Ivoire. And they trail by one. There's 3.30 left in this game. And Diabate, that's going to be the fourth team foul, not unnecessary. Unnecessary. And also, if they're going to beat France, there's no shortcut. There's no, like, you know, quick way of doing it. The platoon penetration, no one helped. He actually dribbled the ball three on three occasions, three bounces. No one had adjusted to try and help the ball. And then they try and reach with no chance of the steal. There's no easy way to win this game. They've just got to knuckle down and play some defense. Well, can they knuckle down and play some defense now? Ducolo. Shot was well off. He's been looking for a shot more today, which I like is the youngin' Mulare pull-up jump shot is good. You love fearless players at times, and young players always are fearless. <laughs> you, you either love the fearlessness or you hate the fearlessness, depending on how the ball falls. It's a great job by Fofana, the first guy really to help and take it away, and no one helps him. Well, tough, tough take by Cordinier. And France back up by one. This game is coming down to the wire, folks. Abu. Oh. There's a lot of time on the clock. I don't think that was the best offensive possession by Cote d'Ivoire and Abu there. Decolo, Francisco, Francisco. Into Gobert. Well, Gobert hasn't played much here in the second half, but he has been efficient when he's on the floor. I mean, Diabate, after that really short spell, has come back. So has Cedric Barb. They leave a boo in the game. And Francisco, great read defensively. As Cote d'Ivoire turn it over. Big mismatch. But the double comes. So Gobert actually turns it over. Diabate right at Batum. No good. Fofana fight for the rebound. And a foul, an unsportsmanlike foul, is going to be called against Cedric Ba, I believe. I think we need to see this one again. So it's going to be two shots and the ball for France. So here's a fight for the rebound. Because 
he grabbed his leg. Oh, he did kind of grab his leg. Yeah, if, if that, and, and if that's the way the official saw it, unsportsmanlike like foul. The only way you can, that you see it any other way is as he as he was falling, he had to bring his arm in and just happened to get his leg. It looked a little bit grabby for me. To me, it looked a little bit grabby. Disappointing, though, as the captain now is going to have to head to the bench for Cote d'Ivoire as that's his fifth personal foul. France only have one foul in this quarter, so they could definitely slow down the ball, not give any quick, easy looks to Cote d'Ivoire on the other end as that shot rolls in. Well, it's a very big ass now. They, they, they absolutely must get a stop here. If they get a stop here, they're right back in the game. If France score, it's a, it's a long, long way back. Uh, they've kept it tight for most of this quarter. They're in a zone. Wow. Shot clock, Decolo. And that is not what you wanted to see if you're a Cote d'Ivoire fan. If you're going to show the zone, you've got to match up on a shooter like Nicolo, not look at him take a wide open one. A kickball. Shot clock will stay at 18. See, again, Shona, like, as he penetrated all of France went below the foul line. Yeah. And Zuzu is like, out there, like, begging for the basketball. I'm not saying that would be the, the answer, but there's five blue shirts in the keyway. On, on the penetration. And turnover, nice hands by Nikola Batu. Nicolo, he just knocked down the last one. Pofana, hand time, no good. A foul's called though. So he'll earn himself a trip to the free throw line. Well, good way to get back in the game is scoring while the clock is stopped. Yeah, he makes the pair and it's back to a two possession game. But what was Nando Nicolo thinking? Eight seconds into a possession, with the, with the score well, like the this. Lead, yeah. yeah. Well, he just made the one earlier, possession earlier. And make that two for Fofana. And they get the ball in. As you see Decolo saying, I'm uh, sorry, you say Batum saying, hey, we got to slow it down, use the clock. Diabate all over Francisco. They find Gobert, Gobert, zero hesitation, easy finish by him. And a foul. I mentioned it, they have fouls to give, and it wasn't on the shot, so it'll be possession Cote d'Ivoire. Nice finish by Rudy Gobert on that last basket. Abu, no good. Gobert comes up with a rebound. About a 10 second differential shot clock, game clock. France leading, they're up eight. They gotta get a steal and quickly. For Dignier, penetration. I believe it was on the pass to Gobert, but it doesn't matter because he's going to go to the free throw line as Cote d'Ivoire have already committed five fouls. Well, you kind of feel that it's an opportunity missed here for the Cote d'Ivoire. Scores were tied deep in the game. They had minimal leads as well. They got out to a one, a two, and a three-point lead. I'm not sure if, when they look back at the decisions they made then, and taking the time out now, it's like a, it's, it's all intents and purposes 
a waste in the sense that you know they could have taken it earlier they could have maybe stopped that french run but it really is credit i think with when france look at it bring it into colo bringing in rudy gobert with a, with a two and a bit minutes just over three minutes to go settled everything down and they, they really looked after the ball since then a good good shot just take a listen to coach Dad, you are here. Wap, you are here. Anisre, you are here. Hey, screen, elevator. Look for Dali. Wap, when he goes through, screen. Look for Dali for a shot. Do you understand? So one screen, elevator, screen here. Look for Dali. Of course, if they are alone, give them the ball. Do we understand each other? Come on. Hey, and go for the ball. Straight out. Let's go. Don't be up. Go. Well, Gobert's been the man for them, hasn't he? In terms of the, the most you know, influential player on the game, he's had a really big game. His minutes have been relatively limited. But whenever he's been in the game, France just are a much more difficult. See his numbers, 17 points and eight yeah. rebounds. The only thing that stopped him having a career night is the fact that Mustafa Fowler has played a lot of minutes. Yeah, true. I mean, he has seven made field goals. It's the most by him in a World Cup, so clearly his best game in a World Cup as Daly's three-point shot is off the mark. And that is going to do it. They will have to get it over half. And I can't imagine them scoring. Well, it was a game of runs, and you almost wanted Cote d'Ivoire to pull off the comeback win and the big upset win against France, but it just wasn't meant to be here in Jakarta as they fall to France 77-87. to 87.